So let's say you've been on your job for a couple months. It's a brand new job. It's your first job out of school. <laughs> first off, congratulations, because I know how that can go. It's pretty nerve wracking. It's hard. It takes a lot for you to get there. And you've been working there for a while now. And all of a sudden you've started to feel like you're falling behind. You're looking around at the other developers and they're very, they, they know a whole lot more than you. And you feel like, oh my goodness, there's a lot I need to learn. But I have no time to learn it. You're sitting there thinking to yourself, I have been so busy with this workload. I I don't know what to do with myself. I don't even know when I'll get the opportunity to learn. How many of you thought that? How many of you felt that? I mean, let's think about this. It's very frustrating, right? I've been there. And it is very hard for you to carve out some time to learn something new while you are on your job, especially if it's a new job. I mean, you're trying to make sure that you are productive, that you are a productive member of your team, that you are, you know, accomplishing your sprint goals, for example. Yeah, I get it. It's extremely hard. I've been there, but you need to do it. You need to learn on the job. You, you need to be able to learn as you work. Now, it is definitely one of the hardest transitions people go through, transitioning from a school setting to a work setting. If you're in uh, high school and you're transitioning to your first job, I mean, think about it for a moment. You spent eight hours a day in high school sitting at a desk, listening to people talk to you day in and day out. And now you're on the job. And if you are a programmer like me, you are sitting at your desk eight hours a day, producing something, creating code or going to meetings. Now, if you were in college, slightly different transition for you. You're going from a college atmosphere where nobody really cared if you showed up for your classes, unless you had a professor who was, you know, one of those. Um, nobody really kind of breathed down your neck to make sure that you read the material, but they did tell you, hey, in two weeks, we have a test on this date. At this date, your first essay is due. You had deadlines too. But you were very free to move around and now here you are in a job and you can't just get up and go like you want. And on top of all of this, for both, you have to produce something. You have to create something each day for your employer. Otherwise, you won't have a job. You see, up to this point, you have been learning or all of your learning has been based on someone else's curriculum. If you're in high school, it's whatever the school board kind of told you. If you're in college, it's whatever your professor was telling. But now you're in a position where you now need to manage your own curriculum. You need to be able to sit back and say, this is what I need to learn to do my job. That's hard. It's a big transition for you. In a sense, that's you taking responsibility for your personal development and your professional development as well. So how do we do this? What do we do to make learning a priority for us? Because if we don't make learning a priority, if you don't make learning a priority, then you're not going to have a job. 
I mean, let's face it, we, we are in a very fast paced world. Our business changes on the, a dime. Let's take a very, very familiar example. Several years ago, Kotlin was an up and coming language. It was cool. A lot of people liked it. It had a lot of the benefits that Java had, but very few downsides. It took a lot of lessons learned from what was bad about Java and fixed it. It kind of looked a little bit like Swift. It kind of looked a little bit like Python. It was very readable. It's a great language, but it really wasn't that mainstream. And then the language designers designed it and added support for Android. Then it started picking up some steam. These Android developers, I mean, I'll tell you straight up at that time when we were doing nothing but Java development, we hated it. We hated Java. Even when I go and I have to deal with a legacy app that still has parts written in Java, I hate it. It's not a fun language when compared to Kotlin. It's definitely more fun than C++ or, or well, I mean, C, geez, most languages are better than C. <laughs> but I'm going down a, a little bit of a rabbit hole there. With the addition of Android support, it started, things started to really change. And then Google I.O. 2017 came. And they made the announcement that Kotlin was now a first class language. Everything in the Android world changed at that moment. Immediately, Kotlin shot through the roof in importance. Companies now started asking themselves, okay, if, if Google is switching over to Kotlin, if Google is supporting Kotlin, we need to start looking at Kotlin. We need to start hiring people who know Kotlin. We need to start training our people on Kotlin. It was overnight. I, I'll tell you, the company I was at at the time, we were just, I mean, we were blown away to hear that that happened. And we were so excited. We were so ready to just use it in a project. And we were, I mean, we were ready for it. We loved it. And it was overnight. As an aside, we kind of took a little bit, but I mean, that's a whole other story. <laughs> The point is, if you are not staying on top of the technological developments in your industry, you're going to fall behind. And when you fall behind, you are not going to have a job. So how can we ensure that we keep our job? How can we ensure that we do not fall behind? Not that hard. The first thing you need to do is you need to know what you want to learn. What is it that you want to learn? Think about that for a second. Is it something project based? So you're working on your project and there's something about your project that you want to learn. Do you want to learn dagger? Mm -hmm. How many times do I get asked about dagger? Do you want to learn about view binding? What about exo player your app the app the project that you're working on it's a media app and so you want to learn about exo player and how it works you see learning something just to learn it is never going to help you it doesn't work out that way there needs to be a reason behind what you learn it's very important but what do i mean by this well, let's say you open up your uh, mail, your email, and the latest newsletter uh, comes out, and there's several articles in there about Android, and you open up one of them, and you just start reading it, and start, you know, learning from it. Then you move on to the next. 30 minutes later, let me ask you this. 
what was in that first article? What did that first article cover? I bet you don't know. Why? Because it happens to me. I read all of these articles and I don't remember. It's kind of, you know, annoying. So, what do we do? Well, we have a reason to learn. We know what we want to learn. And on top of that, we have a project to work on. I always, always recommend when you are going to learn something, have a project. Simplest project? <laughs> You're going to laugh. Because I find it funny. To do apps. How many tutorials out there that are based around a to-do app. Probably hundreds of thousands of them. I mean, there's a reason that's the case. And it's because we all know what a to-do app is supposed to do. Take a list of items that you're supposed to do, you check it off, it goes away. Allow the user to add items. There you go. So, not only do you need to have a goal of learning something, you need to have a project that's going to help you learn. So if you want to learn Dagger, you need to create a to-do app that uses Dagger to help you learn it, the, learn it. Once you know that project, what you're going to do and what you are going to learn, you now are able to break that project down into simple bite-sized tasks that you can go and complete in order to get you closer to that, finishing that project. All right, the final thing that you need is a routine. So there's this thing called the five hour rule. I don't really remember who uh, said it first, I'm uh, sorry. The five hour rule basically states that for one hour a day, each day of the week, you're going to study something, you're gonna learn something. So that's five days a week, Monday through Friday. So that's five hours a week. Now, here's the thing. You can't just say, oh, today I'm going to spend one hour working on my to-do app to learn Dagger. No, 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 no. That doesn't work. Because even though you just say that, when are you going to do it? I mean, you, you pull up Slack and all of a sudden you've got this big notification coming through saying, hey, I need your help with this. That's happened to me derails your intention of learning something new. No, you can't just say you're going to learn. You're going to spend one hour a day learning. No, you need to set, set a specific time. You need to sit there and say, at this time, I'm going to spend the next hour working on my project and learning something. Okay. I recommend the morning myself. I really like it. Recommend what you sit there and you say is from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. I am going to work on this project. I am going to learn this. And then you stick with it from Monday through Friday, day in and day out, no matter what. And that's how you learn. You make it a habit, make learning a habit. So what you need to do is you need to sit and say, what do I want to learn? Next, you need to say, okay, I want to create this project to learn something. And then finally, you need to say, this is the time that I'm going to spend learning something. Okay. It's very important to you that you follow those three steps because they're very easy. It's very easy. Now I'll admit working on the project and, and doing the, and the actual process of learning is not easy, but going through those three steps is, and having the discipline to follow through is, it's really not that hard to carve out a small amount of your, out of your day to learn. It doesn't have to be an hour. I recommend maybe 30 minutes at most two hours. 
mean, you're you're not there to learn. You're there to produce. Two hours is asking a little bit too much of your uh, employer. All right. So, what are you going to learn? Are you going to set aside to learn every day? Are you going to make it a habit? I would love to hear this information from you. Tell me about it in the comments and let's talk about it. All right. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, please do me the favor and share this video with someone that you think they would also enjoy or that they would learn from this as well. Like this video too. Hitting the like button really helps. And also hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new videos about once a week at this point. So, all right. If you do all of that for me, I will be back here next time with a new video.